This video shows you how simple it is to create a Modbus connection to your device using the Data Hub Modbus TCP driver. First, open the Data Hub configuration and navigate to the OPC tab. Make sure the Act as an OPC server box is checked. This will allow the Data Hub to serve the Modbus data to your OPC client. Next, navigate to the Modbus tab. Make sure the Enable Modbus Master box is checked at the top. This will allow Data Hub to communicate as a Modbus Master to any configured Modbus slaves. To configure a Modbus slave, click Add Slave. Give your device a friendly, meaningful name. Next, enter the IP address associated with your device. The port can be left at default unless your device is using something other than 502, which is the default for Modbus communication. The retry rate specifies how often the Data Hub should attempt to retry the connection to the slave in case of a connection failure. This can usually be left at default. When more than one connection is made to the same IP address and port number, there is an opportunity for the Data Hub Modbus driver to share the same socket for all such slave connections. If you select this option, the Modbus driver will find any other slave connections to the same IP address and port and combine them into a single socket connection. This would be used for gateways that have more than one device on the other end. If a socket is being shared, checking the Serialize Messages on the Socket option tells the Data Hub Modbus driver to serialize the communication with the devices. That is, not send a message until the previous message has produced a response. This can be used if the gateway requires the request to be serialized. Otherwise, we recommend disabling this option to optimize throughput to all the devices on the other end of the gateway. The Data Hub Modbus driver supports nine of the most commonly used Modbus read and write functions. The driver can write all of the value types that it can read. You can select which Modbus functions may be used with your device here. Usually, these can be left at default. The polling rate specifies how often the Data Hub should pull the Modbus slave for data updates. This can usually be left at default. The maximum message length supported by the slave device can be set here. The default Modbus specification is 256, but some devices may vary from that. Check your device documentation and set this value accordingly. The slave ID can be any value from 0 to 256. This setting is useful when the connection goes through a serial gateway to multiple slave devices, and the target slave device needs to be identified. Since I am making a direct TCP connection to my device, I can leave this at the default of one. The addressing options are provided to allow for configuration based on your unique device, allowing the selected addresses to match the documentation of the slave. These can often be left at default. Next, give your data domain a friendly, meaningful name. The data domain is a group of all defined data points for the slave connection. Addresses can be specified as individual values or ranges of values. To add an individual address, click Add Point to create a new item for this domain. Choose the correct address and type for this item. We will be accessing a holding register that contains a 16-bit unsigned integer using the default Modbus byte order. The dead band setting can be used to filter out insignificant value changes. This can usually be left at the default of zero, which means that no dead band applies and all value changes will be considered significant. Enter the offset for the desired address here. To access register 40,425, an offset of 425 should be entered. Leave the Allow Rights to Modbus Device box checked if you want the item to have read and write access from your client. The transform settings can be left at default unless you wish to scale the values in some way. Click OK to configure the data point and then click OK again to complete the configuration of the Modbus slave. Click Apply to implement all of your changes to the configuration. You should now see the status of the Modbus connection change to running. Click View Data to see the values from your device. This completes our demonstration on configuring a connection in the Data Hub Modbus TCP driver. As always, we are here to help you every step of the way.
please contact our support team if you find yourself needing any assistance.